Facebook. So I can't I can't live stream on Facebook. All praises. So this is not um, a light class. This is a, a serious class, but it should be review for most of us. So we have we have our wine. Let's go ahead and have our, our drink together. Everyone have a glass. This is in honor of our day of covenant, and, and like Hezekiah said, it may not be perfect, but we keep on our culture. So may the Most High bless each and every one of you. I'm Mark. Say, all praise. So we want to go into this topical study. Why we love Hamashiach, the spirit of prophecy. Why we love Hamashiach, the spirit of prophecy. And to open this up, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 2. And uh, can you read verses 2 through, um, I'm sorry, 9 through 17 for us? Hebrews 2, 9 through 17. Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 9. But we see Yahweh Shai, who is made you know, KJV? That's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We see Yahweh Shai, who is made a little lower than the Malachiim for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of Allah should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the Yaladam, which Allah have given me, for as much then as the Yaladam are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is, Hasatan, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime uh, all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of the Malachim, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be merciful and faithful, a faithful high priest in things pertaining to Allah to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. Can you read 17 again? Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be merciful and faithful high priest, and things pertaining to Allah to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Somebody give the most high hand clap. Oh, y'all. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Somebody give the most high hand clap. Today, I want to focus on Messiah because people get confused when we say that we don't worship him. And not that we care about people's understanding or misunderstanding that we have but we want to make it clear that we exalt him in his proper place so today it's all about why we love Hamashiach, the spirit of prophecy and i said it years ago on facebook before most of you knew me and it, it messed people heads up and i said it again I, I have a confession and this may change your opinion of me and i'm fine with that my wife already knows so you don't have to Think you're snitching on me or anything but i'm in love with a man i'm in love with a man and that man is messiah he saved my life you can't tell me nothing different so if you want to call me soft or, or you say you're in love with a man i haven't met him before but 
in these scriptures. I meet him in these scriptures. So we want the world to know we're not ashamed to say his name. We're not ashamed to say that his blood has purchased my way back home. So today it's all about why we love it. Well, if you don't love Messiah, prayerfully after today, you will love Messiah. But we don't worship him. We love him. We exalt him because he is our, the text say that he's not ashamed to call us brethren. He's not ashamed to call filthy you and me brethren, drunkards, drug addicts, pimps, dope dealers, liars, thieves. He saw us in our dirt. He said, Pop, they still my brothers. Pop, they still my sister. That's huge. That's huge. So we don't demote him. We don't belittle him. We love him and, and we worship Yah by his blood. We love him in the proper context of what it truly is. I was doing a light study in that word, verse 17, it says, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. And you know, these translations are filthy. They do a poor job at, at relaying the message of the writer. So I looked the word up in Greek, and the word in Greek, you always got to go to the root, because that first word you go to is not going to be the root word. So I go to the root of that Greek word there, behoove, and it gets you closer to what the writer is saying. It benefited him. It profited Messiah to be made like his brothers. Why? So he could be a faithful high priest. Because if, if he didn't take on this flesh, he would have been just like his dad. If he didn't take on this flesh and come down to this earth to know what it's like to look at a woman too long, to feel thirst, he would have been just like his dad. Kill him, dad. So it benefited him. It behooved him to be made like his brothers, so now I could judge you righteously. You stole, son, go pay him sevenfold. Son, you lie, go tell the truth and lie no more. If he didn't take on this flesh, he would be like his father. All of us are done. All of us are dead. It benefited him to be made like his brothers, and that's why we love him. He took a demotion. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's, let's go into this thing. We only got 12 scriptures today, y'all. Somebody say 12. Amen. And I didn't do it on purpose. It just happened like that. So we only got 12 scriptures so y'all can get up out of here. All right, so let's go to this first one. Uh, let's go to uh, Wisdom Mashallah chapter 8, Proverbs chapter 8. Uh, Proverbs chapter 8, and we're going to start at verse 22. And just to show the world why we love him so much. And we hope after today, if you don't love him, you will love Hamashiach, the true of my. We don't love Jesus. I'm just going to put that out there. We don't love Jesus anymore, because we understand by the blood of by the blood of Yahushai, we understand that Jesus is a made up entity of the Romans. If you say Jesus in that first century, none of these Israelites know who you're talking about. So we say Yahushai because it means Yah salvation. So no, we don't love Jesus. If that aff affronts you, I apologize in advance, but it's time for us to take the bandaid off. You Christians are talking about Jesus. There's nobody named Jesus in the Bible. His name means Yah is salvation. That's why we call him Yahweh Shah. So let's show the family why we love him so much. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22. Shema. 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 Read. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever there our Tatha was. Before he even made the earth, so this text is calling him wisdom. But all praise to the great I am. We have a, a class on the channel uh, called, I believe we use the other Hebrew word for wisdom, kakama. We now know because of the blood of Yahweh shot, we know when this text, this book of Proverbs speak of wisdom, it's speaking of the sun. And this, this Solomon is saying, before the world was founded, I was with the father. It's talking about the sun. Read that again, Ab. Yahweh has possessed me in the beginning before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, uh -huh. or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the Shemayim, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. Continue. No, this is just to put it in perspective. 
Messiah left a holy, uncorrupt environment. He was there at the very beginning, before the Most High said, let there be light, he was there with the Most High. So for him to take on this flesh and just to come down to redeem us, that's love. I know this ain't Passover, but to me, every day is Passover. That's love. Can you imagine you live in a, a palace? You live in a 20-story 20, 20 mansion, but just to relate to your brother, you're going to come down to the projects and spend the whole summer with him. Trying to bring him up, man. You you can you can do better in school, man. You can get good grades. That's that's. I can't even put in words what he did. He left a holy place and took. This flesh is a demotion. This flesh is a demotion. This flesh is a result of sin. This is not the stage that Adam was made in. Adam didn't have what we had. Adam didn't get this until he sinned. So the Messiah took on a demotion to come down here to save us. That's love. That's love. The next one we go going to, let's go to Devarium is Deuteronomy. Devarium is Deuteronomy or the words, Deuteronomy 18 and 18. Devarium is Deuteronomy. I'm not ashamed to say I love Messiah, the real Messiah. Thank you for that one, Kyle. Let me know I ain't by myself. The brother ain't shame you love a man. <laughs> I'm with you, brother. Deuteronomy 18 and 18. Deuteronomy 18 and 18. We're going to read uh, the first uh, those two verses, 18 through 19. Shema. Read. Deuteronomy 18 and 18. I will raise. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I command him. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So the church missed this. He says, I'm going to raise y'all up a prophet, not from Europe, not from China. Where's that boy Prince from? Uh, your brother. I'm going to raise you up a prophet from among your brothers. It all is about black people. No, I'm not saying that, but you got to be from my brothers. And he says, he's, I'm going to put my words in his mouth. If you don't listen to him, I'm going to require it. That means I'm going to kill you. The father's saying, I'm going to raise up a prophet like you, Moses. Now, this is huge because what did Moses do for the Israelites? He was a savior for the Israelites. Thank you. So he says, this, this ain't talking about the other prophets like Daniel, Ezra, and Nehemiah. He said, no, this prophet's going to be like you, Moses. He's going to deliver my people. So we love Messiah because we know by the way he walked and what he did, no one was a prophet like you. You came and delivered us from spiritual darkness. No one has... Your rabbis couldn't do it. Well, my sage says this, and, and, and my rabbi, your rabbis couldn't do what he did. Y'all had the Torah, all these big old fringes and phylacteries on, and these bells. Y'all was dead in your side. Mm. It took my son to come down here doing things y'all hadn't seen. Like, who is this? Who, ain't this Joe's son? No, this is the Most High son. So this is why we love him. We honor him. We don't worship him, but we know what side our bread is buttered when we love Messiah. He is the spirit of prophecy. Any questions, comments, or concerns about that one? Oh, man, I just got ahead of myself. Before we go to the, this next one, Messiah is the spirit of prophecy. You know what? You know what? All praise the Most High. Yeah, it's going to flow. Let's go to Kazawan 19 and 10. Cause of one is revelation. Cause of one is revelations or visions. Revelations 19, verse 10. This is just the prerequisite, if you would have it, why we love Messiah. He is the spirit of prophecy. He is the spirit of prophecy. We three down already, y'all. I'm almost out of here. <laughs> Chef said that y'all got used to 40 minute classes. <laughs> Chef said you passed for 45 minutes. <laughs> Revelation 19 and 10, Shema. Read. Revelation 19 and verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou, 
do it not. So John is seeing this vision, and the Most High sends an angel to John, and John is so, you know, in awe. John is about to fall down and worship this angel, this messenger, and the messenger says, what? See thou, do it not. Don't worship me, uh-huh. I am thy fellow servant. I'm thy fellow servant. I'm your brother. Uh huh. And you, brethren, that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, worship Allah. He says, I have the testimony. I, what would he say? What did we say testimonies were? Those who've been around for a minute? What was testimonies? Uh, uh, witness or witness account. What word did we use? Uh, you actually said it. I know. Testimonies are receipts. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. We got the receipts that he's a son. He done healed the dead. God wasn't doing that. He walked on water. None of y'all apostles walked on. None of y'all great sages walked on water. We got the testimony. We got the receipt of Hamashiach that he is the only begotten son. Read on. And you brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, worship Allah Hayim. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. This angel who resides in the heaven where the Father is, this angel knows that, hey, don't worship me, but worship the Father. He didn't say worship Christ. He says, brother, don't worship me. Worship, worship, worship the Father because I too have the spirit of prophecy. I have the testimony of Christ, and Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Did y'all catch that? Now, what dropped in my spirit is Christ is the spirit of prophecy. The word prophecy in the Hebrew comes from Naba, just two characters, the Na and the Ba, the Na and the house. Naba. Naba means, the Na means the seed. And the Ba, the, the house, the picture of the house means to be inside or to be with. So a prophet, he should see that's inside. And all of us being natural born Israelites, we have to see all the way from Adam, Noah, Abraham inside of us. Mm. Now in Christianity, they want to make it seem like you're a prophet when you give a prediction. No names. How many of y'all have heard some so-called prophecies never came true? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. From Holy Ghost people speaking in tongues, foaming at the mouth. Right. According to the text, you're supposed to get stoned to death. So in our culture, a prophet don't always have to give you a word. I'm living by the seed inside. Mm -hmm. That's why all of us are prophets. In the book of Acts, he says, y'all are the sons of the prophets. So we are prophets because we live by the seed that's been planted inside us. Don't mean that you got to go around, oh, son, you're going to give a million dollars a day. Oh, son, I see you with a new wife a day. That's Christianity. It's a bunch of lies. Waving your suit jacket around. Ooh, power in. That's a bunch of lies. So the spirit of prophecy is living by the seed that's inside of you, right? And Revelation 19.10 says that Christ, Hamashiach, we call him Yahawashai, he is the spirit of prophecy. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try to keep this nice and keep, this, keep my passion out of this. I don't want to scare y'all. But there's been no seeds planted inside the other nations. Right. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes, there's been no seeds planted inside Russia, Britain, Rome, Greece. There's been no seeds planted. The Most High didn't send no prophets to them. Mm. So if he loves the world, why didn't he send a prophet to warn y'all, hey, king, sleeping with your daughter is sin. Mm. Hey, king, killing your brother is sin. Mm. Hey, king, killing your son so you can remain on the throne is wicked. He didn't send no prophets to the other nations. So Christ is the spirit of prophecy, but it's for Israel. Right. It's for the Hebrews. It's just it got to be what it is. When people understand what this book is saying, they're going to leave it. Right. They're going to leave it. This book has been taught by a Greco-Roman perspective. This book is for Shemitic people. Christ is the spirit of prophecy. The prophecies were sent to Israel. But, somebody say but. But. Somebody say, but. but. Wow. <laughs> there are prophecies that refer to the other nations. There are prophecies that refer to the other nations. And there's three types of prophecies that are mentioned for the other nations. One is, you're going to cleave to my people. You're going to humble yourself to my people. One is, 
you're going to be destroyed. And the other is, you're going to serve my people. Anybody in a rush? No. Let's go to Isaiah 14 and 1. Kapai, you get Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60, Kapai. So, more y'all get uh, Jeremiah 51. We rehearsed that last week. So, so I slow down and don't lose people with, with my little excitement here. The prophecies that refer to Israel are superior to the prophecies about the nations. The prophecies about the nations are inferior to the prophecies for Israelites. There's three groups of prophecies for Gentiles, non-Israelites. You're either going to cleave to us, serve us, or you're going to be destroyed by us. And we got the text to prove what we're saying. The first one, let's go to Isaiah 14 and 1. Isaiah 14 and 1. And we're going to take it to 2 or 3 just to get the context. Who has that one? Is that Isaiah 14 and 1? Isaiah 14 and 1. Who, did, who got that one? You got that one? Shema. The book of Isaiah or Yashia, chapter 14, verse 1. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob uh -huh. and will yet choose Israel. He's going to choose Israelites. And set them in their own land. Set them in their own land. Uh huh. And the strangers shall be joined with them. So strangers are going to be joined with us. Did anyone notice that the strangers were called sons? Did anyone notice that? Righteous strangers who finally submit, like, wow, y'all are the holy people. They get to serve us. And that's an honor. But you'll never call a son like the Israelites are. The strangers that cleave to us, that means you finally humble down. Like, wow, that's, that's Messiah. That, that is your Messiah. What you need me to do? So this is the, the group that gets to cleave to us. Keep reading. Uh. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Uh huh. Not the Christian church. Right. Verse 2 mm -hmm. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. Now, see, this is going into a different group of Gentiles. That first group I read. Those were the ones who humbled down. They want to cleave to us. Like, man, y'all are the holy people. What, what must I do to be saved? That's, that's a righteous strength. Now, this group he's reading are the ones who afflicted us, the ones who had us captive, the ones who were celebrating their 4th of July victory over us. This is this group. We don't have. And they shall take them captives. We're gonna, now we're going to take them captive. Uh -huh. Whose captives they were. Who captives we were. So Babylon, Rome, Britain, Portuguese, Greece. the French, Greece, all y'all had us as captives in one form or fashion. Now we're going to take them and they're going to be our possession. These are two different groups. The first group are righteous strangers says, hey, I want to I wanna serve y'all. I want to I live righteous too. They get to cleave to us. This group right here, you're going to serve us. Serve us. Read on I. And they shall rule over their oppressors. We're going to rule over our oppressors. Side note, that's all we need. Uh, Jeremiah 30 says that when the Messiah comes back, the Messiah we're looking for, when he comes back, he's going to break the oppression off his people. What group of people have opp oppression on them? The British have their own government. The Israelis have their own government. You have no oppression on you. So this is just another group of strangers. There's two groups we went over so far. The group of strangers who cleave to us, they humbly submit. And the other strangers are going to be oppressed because you oppressed the Israelites. Any questions or comments about that? Let's go to the next one. Who has the Isaiah 60? Isaiah 60, starting verse 1. Nah, it's so much in that chapter. I, um, let's drop down to... Um, Verse 13, 13 through 15. Isaiah 60, 13 through 15. Isaiah 60, 13. The glory of Lebanon shall come up unto thee, the fire tree. The, for the fir tree? The fir tree, I'm sorry. Oh, the, come, come, that's a good eye. 
For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Just like Isaiah said earlier, if you don't want to serve us, you're going to get killed. Let's just put it out. You're going to be killed. A bloodbath. The Lebanon shall come into thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Zion's going to be glorious, uh-huh. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. Plantation owners, presidents, supervisors, everyone who had us as their laughing stock, oppressed us, landlords charging us high behind rent, everybody who caused us grief want to come bending to us. Mm. Bending to us. The prophecies for the other nations, again, if you just join in, I don't want to lose nobody. The prophecies for the other nations are inferior to born again, I got to put that out there, born again, blood covenant Israelites. The prophecies for the nations are inferior to us. The prophecies for us are restoration, refreshing, setting you back on high. For the nations, y'all got three choices. Cleave to us, serve us, or be killed by us. Read on out. Start back at 14. Come. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Mm -hmm. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. A joy of many generations. So to the Israelite, the prophecy is superior to that stranger. The stranger, y'all got either servitude or you humbly cleaving to us. The prophecies about us is restoration. We get our glory back. That's what they don't teach us at these churches. The water for that. Uh, and the last one we're going to is Jeremiah 51. And I'll, for the sake of time, just go straight to it. Um, Jeremiah 51, 18 through 20, is it? We've rehearsed this last week. Jeremiah 51, 18 through 20. What's those verses again? Um, Jeremiah 51, 18 through 20. 21, actually. Shema. Verse 18. They are vanity, the work of errors. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. Your president, your election is vanity. You getting out, rock the vote, pins on, your government is vanity. Trusted in the American government, trusted in the British government, trusted in the Canadian government, it's vanity. In a time of visitation, when the Most High shake this thing up like a snow globe, your government is going to perish. Read on up. The portion of Yaquab is not like them. Uh -huh. The Israelites are not like these people. We don't vote. We don't celebrate the 4th of July. We don't eat swine. We don't do Christmas. The Israelites are not like these wicked people. Read on up. For he is the former of all things. Uh -huh. And Yasharala is the rod of his inheritance. Yahweh Tazabah is his name. Yahweh is our inheritance. It reads better in the Septuagint. We don't care about your oil fields. We don't care about your vibranium, uh, all this, what, what they got in the cell phones. We don't care about none of them, them things y'all digging in the earth. The most high is our inheritance. Do you get that? I don't have to own no poppy field. I, I have the most high. The most high can cause oil in my backyard. Now you want to run and beat my house down. How much you want? We got the most high. We don't need your, your 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 wicked resources. I got the creator of all things. Read that in some torture when you get a chance. It reads better. The most high is our inheritance. Read on how. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nation, the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. If the most high loves the world, why is he using us to destroy the world? Exactly. If he loves everybody the same, Gamar why he says Judah, 
Y'all are my battle axe. Y'all gonna destroy kingdoms. And we're doing it now. The churches are empty. Pastors gotta go get a job now. No one's paying you tithes no more because we're exposing your lying. If you say by grace, Pastor, can you fornicate? Well, no. Well, why can't you fornicate, Pastor? Well, that's a sin. Well, how do I know what sin is, Pastor? Whatever I say it is, I don't think we're going with that. We're exposing these preachers. Christianity is crumbling, and we're destroying kingdoms. The Roman government is supported by Christianity. We're destroying world governments right now. We don't opt. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. Soldiers, uh-huh. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. Tanks, tankers, uh-huh. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. When women get it too? Women gotta go too. You're wicked. You're wicked. Read on. And with thee will I break in pieces old and young. Old men gonna get it too? Mm -hmm. Young men gonna get it too? They don't talk about this in the churches. Read on, huh? And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break the people. In pieces with the the shepherd and his flock. Your pastors in your churches are getting broken pieces. Your pastors in your churches are getting broken pieces. So this is what we're bringing. That's all we need authority for that. The point we're making when this Bible speaks of prophecy, Revelations 19 and 10 says that Christ, Yahweh, Messiah, is the spirit of prophecy. But the prophecies for us Israelites are positive and superior to the nations. This is why we love Messiah so much. He is the spirit of prophecy, and the prophecies for us are restoration, redemption. Any comments or questions about that? Con, I just had a question about um, Joel chapter 3. 17. Uh huh. Um, and it says, So shall you know that I am the Donah Yah, dwelling in Zion, my set apart mountain. Uh, then shall Jerusalem be set apart, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. Like, what, um, I was just wondering what time period I was talking about, and when it says no strangers shall pass through her anymore, uh, like uh, what, what that was saying. I can't say with concrete witnesses, uh, that's a great question. I can't say with concrete witnesses what period that is because during Christ's reign, the strangers are serving us. So the text say no strangers shall even come through the city. So we would have to need some more witnesses or they call, because the strangers that serve us and live with us, they are called strangers, but they're lawful. They're keeping the same covenant we're keeping. So I don't know if the text is meaning the, the refer to them as strangers or these are people who don't or who are lawless should not pass through the city. So I'll have to build more witnesses to confirm what period this is. I do have a theory that when it's all said and done, Israel is the last man standing. When it's all said and done, Israel is the last man standing. And that's when we're going to, that's the perfect segue to the next verse too. Oh, Father, you're so good to us. Father, you're so good to us. I haven't put all the pieces together, but I've been saying, I see you out. I've been saying it over the years. When it's all said and done, I have circumstantial evidence that it's only Israelites left. And the verses we're going to go to next may support that theory, but for now, it's just a theory. Narayah, you have something out? I was just going to ask before you said that. You know, just reading this whole chapter is talking about the Valley of Decision uh, as far as Yasha Pot. Uh, could it also mean as far as there shall no strangers pass through her anymore? Could it just mean like no war? Nobody's going to ever going to try to come against Israel anymore? It could be because that is the Valley of, of Judgment. So it could be in that context. Again, we would have to build our case to confirm which position it is. But and that's what it is. Study no study war no more. It's, it says um, it says uh, da, da, da. then you will know that I am Yahweh Allah I live in Zion, my holy mountain. Jerusalem will be holy forever, and foreign armies will never conquer her again. Okay, so that translation is still the work of men. I would I would build more witnesses for the translation. So this next verse though may support my I'm not saying it is concrete yet. 
But any other, that's a good question. Any other comments or questions before we move on? Let's go to the, this next one. Uh, Bamadabar is numbers. Bamadabar means in the wilderness. The pagans call it numbers. Let's go to Numbers chapter 24. And I, we're just going to read 17 through 19. Bamadabar is in the wilderness. And we're reading chapter 24, verses 17 through 19. Shema. Read. Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Yaquab, and a scepter shall rise out of Yashar Allah, and shall smite the corners of Ma'ab, and destroy all the Yaladim of Sheth, and Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Yashar Allah shall do valiantly. Out of Yaquab shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. So this is a prophecy. You guys know the story. You guys are Sunday school all-stars. This is a wicked prophet who was uh, making a lot of money prophesying for the wicked kings. And this wicked king tried to get Balaam to come curse us, the Israelites, when Moses Moses was bringing us out of the, uh, the, the, the wilderness, and the Most High turned him. The Most High turned this evil prophet, and he starts to prophesy good for us. And he's telling this evil king that I see Jacob, a star is going to rise out of Jacob. A power is going to come out of Jacob, and this power is going to destroy all the sons of Seth. Now, the sons of Seth, this is a powerful prophecy that the church don't want to deal with because they want to say, Adam, Adam wasn't an Israelite. Abraham wasn't an Israelite. Uh, uh, Enoch wasn't an Israelite. But they were sons of Seth. We killed the sons of Seth. Slock, let me, let me retract that. The royal line of Abraham destroys the sons of Seth. That's where the other nations come from. So when they say we all come from Adam, yeah, well, you know, let's let's pick up the story. Adam's sons are wicked. Only one, only one line stayed with the father, and that's us. So when they say we all God's children, la ah, the text don't agree with you. We're gonna kill the sons of Seth, and it mentions specifically Edom. Edom. That's why we love Messiah. He is the spirit of prophecy, and when we read these prophecies, it's our hope. This is what we hang our head because we don't have hope if Messiah ain't the spirit of prophecy. Why are we waiting around? What are we waiting for? What, what, what are we, why are we still being, being domiciled if we don't have no hope? We love Messiah because he's the spirit of prophecy. And then comes the question about that. Before we move on, I want to get that one I was mentioning. Let's go back to 24 and uh, it may be 22. It says, I see Jacob dwelling alone. I see him dwelling alone. And this is why I say when it's all said and done, I believe only Israelites are going to be standing. It's either 22 or 23, I believe. He says, I see, I see Jacob standing alone. No one's dwelling with him. Uh, 23 to 23 from the tops of the rocks Come on, let's let's read that this is my theory is not gospel is not doctrine this is a theory I've been working on for years just hasn't had, had the time to build the witnesses because it's more important first of all I gotta make sure I make a design Don't, can't be worried about who's if Jacob by itself trying to make sure my house is clean but I believe when it's all said and done after the nation serve us and the most high shows us off as his righteous people I believe that other nations get destroyed. And this is why, I, this is one one scripture that leads me to believe this. This is Numbers 23, not, where is it, 17? Nine. Nine, nine through? At least uh, 10. Yeah, nine through 10 or 11. This is why I think the only righteous Israelites are going to be left standing. Numbers 23, verse 9. 
From the tops of the rocks I shall see him, or I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone. And shall not be reckoned among the nations. So the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. We're going to be dwelling by ourselves. So this is contradicting the, the stranger serving us. So that's why my theory is when it's all said and done, Messiah has his millennial reign. He done showed us off. I believe it's just us. I just can't prove it. So don't take it as my gospel. This is a case I'm working on. I haven't had the time to finish the case. But that's why I think in the, when it's all said and done, it's only Israel. It's only Israel. Any comments or questions? All right, so the reason why we love Messiah is because he is the spirit of prophecy. And we read the prophecies for Israelites, for Hebrews, physical sons of Abraham. The prophecies gives us hope. And the prophecy gives us hope because of what Messiah did for us. Let's go to the next one. Yahshua Yah is Isaiah. Yahshua is Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. And this is a staple in the Christian church. They just twist it out of context. This Bible, I said it last week, this Bible is the only book that you can read out of context and put it on everybody. You can put this Bible on everybody. You have a master's degree and can't put things in context. Isaiah 53 and verse 3. Read. Isaiah 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Is this talking about King David? Why not? King David was the despised. The nation loved King David. That's what these anti-Masonic, uh, Messianic people, I said Masonic, that's what they are, Masonic. That's what these anti-Messianic people try to say. Oh, this is talking about King David. This is talking about the nation of Israel. This is talking about Messiah. He was despised. He was despised by the people. Read on. Mm -hmm. Surely he hath borne our griefs and, we, and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of our high and afflicted. He took our whipping for us. He took the punishment for us. Back in the streets, we would say he did a bid for us. He did a bid for us. Read on. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions, uh-huh. And he was bruised for our iniquities. Our iniquities. The chastisement of our shalom was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. This is what I want to highlight. Destroying Christian dogma is a full-time job. Because this is the first we read in Christianity to get a healing. By his stripes shall heal. Come out of him. Loose him, Satan. Loose him, Satan. Walk. Arms grow. Arms grow. All this fanatical crap. By his stripes we are healed. It wasn't talking about physical sickness. By his stripes, the nation was redeemed. By his suffering, our nation has been put back on high. This thing is national. You've been taking our scrolls, read all our context. Do, 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 do. You don't know what you're preaching in them churches. This is not about no physical healing. It's about the nation. By him doing that, taking that whipping for us, the Father says, I, I, I love y'all again. Y'all can call on me again. That's why he told him in, in the so-called New Testament, if you ask anything in my name, the Father will heal you, hear, hear you. This is what Isaiah 53 is talking about. Not no physical here. You're going, you, in two days, you're going to be whole. Next day, why are you still coughing? Pastor, how you laying hands on people and you sick yourself? Can you sketch that up for me? This is a national book for national Israelites. By his stripes, we were healed. We've been redeemed. We can call on Yah again. We know his name now. Oh, yeah. We don't, uh, Verse Isaiah 53 and verse 6. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And Yahweh have laid on him the iniquity of us all. I'm just doing me. How many heard that, that phrase? I'm just doing me. I'm trying to get right. I'm trying to get my mind right. You're going to get your mind right with a, a marijuana leaf? You're going to get your mind right with a pint of Hennessy? That's how sick we were. And he bore that on him. 
He bore that when we were sick out of our minds. Bed hopping. You, 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 you tap that out, I'm next. Why would you want to go by it? You know he's dirty. Sick people. We're sick. The Most High took that for us to redeem us, to heal us. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. For God. I, don't, I, don't wanna, I know y'all too holy to, for that talk. We got to talk like this because the church is going to hide this. Now pastors, homosexual, kids out of because you so Oh, bless you, Jesus. Whole choir members full of whores and whoremongers. Tired of this mess. Read on, Ah. Verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? So if, this, if you don't have the eyes to see that only Yahweh Shai Messiah fit this, you have a demon on you. Ain't no way to some David don't fit this. No, no, none of your great apostles fit this. Only one fit this description is Messiah. We call him Yahweh Shai. He is the spirit of prophecy. This is why we love him. He took this punishment for us, the nation, not the world. Because he said he was wounded for our iniquities. What are iniquities? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. So if you don't have the law, he wasn't stricken for you. Okay. If you don't keep the commandments, he wasn't stricken for you. How many of y'all is now in summertime, we got friends that you still, as your Facebook friends, seeing pots of crabs? Mm. It's, I'm just biting my tongue like, bro, you eating garbage. Got shrimp, shrimp on. Wait, bro, you eating roaches? I'm like, you know, they, I can't. I'm getting frustrated. Like, bro, you think you really got the old bay on there? Do you eating garbage? So this is why we love Yahweh Shai. He is the spirit of prophecy, and the prophecies are for Israelites. All the prophecies about Israelites are positive restoration after we get through this punishment. Any questions or comments about that? All right, let's go over to Isaiah 63, verses 1 through 8. Yahshua Yah is Isaiah. Isaiah means Yah is salvation. It's the same name as Yahweh Isaiah 63, verses 1 through 8. Shema. Shema. Read. Isaiah 63. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Uh huh. That is. Glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness mighty to save. Who is this killer coming from Edom? Who is this gangster coming from Edom? He is glorious in his appearance. This killer is the, this is one of the greatest killers this world is ever going to see. You think Scarface was hard? You think Big Meats was hard? Wait till they see this man coming from Basra with his clothes dyed red. Read on, I. Come. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, uh -huh. and thy garments like him that treadeth the wine fat? He must have spilled too much red wine on him, babe. He probably I, done got his garment soiled with that, that red cherry wine. Read on, I. I have trodden the wine press alone, uh -huh. and the people, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them. In my anger. I didn't even call my little brothers yet. Mm. I didn't even restore the 12 tribes to their feet yet. I'm doing this. Remember I said, we're just going to be coming through like little babies and think we're doing something. He was already knocked out. Messiah done gave him the business. <laughs> Messiah just wants us to feel good. Uh, you see how I got him up? Man, Messiah already came through. <laughs> but it's making us feel good. Go back, babe. I got my three of them, babe. <laughs> Messiah is doing the heavy work for us. He's coming through, didn't even call us yet. I'm going to come through first and soften them up. Y'all just come through and give him a little kick. Messiah is the Messiah is coming through. Doing, they, don't, they don't talk about this man. They don't talk about this man in the church. Nah. Uriah? It's just a funny comment for those who remember that movie, Harlem Nights. <laughs> Y'all remember that scene where everybody was dumping with them big guns? And they, we, we got one single dude that's in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be us. <laughs> Messiah done did the heavy work. We just coming through getting mop up points. No one talks about this Messiah coming to kill people. All they say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You can keep one commandment. 
I don't think you're going to hear well done, my good faith will serve him. Read on, Al. What you say? <laughs> Read on, Al. All right. Uh, verse, verse 3 again. I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garment. So this is why I say these people going to school, getting degrees, the text explained to you what the wine was. You don't need a degree. His garment being dyed with wine. No, he's telling you what that is. It's blood. It's, you ever been to a slaughterhouse? You got to understand the hermeneutics. Man, please. <laughs> <laughs> this Messiah is coming through with blood. You ever been to a butcher shop? They come out with blood all, all on there. This is what Messiah is looking like. He's bloody from killing people. He's killing people. Freedom, huh? And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. Blood fragments, ligaments, noses, all this guts. This is the pretty, they, all they want to do is pretty roses. And, oh, Jesus want to just love you. He wants you to live lawfully. If not, you're going to get killed. Freedom, huh? For the day of vengeance is in my heart. Mm. And the year of my redeemed is come. Mm. And I look, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me. This is messianic. My own, my own arm brought salvation to me. Yeah, Shai's name starts with the glyph of an arm. Mm. So that's why it's necessary to learn your culture. We miss this. He's, this is the Most High speaking through Isaiah. The Most High saying, my own arm brought salvation to me. My own arm, my own son brought my people back to me. That's a praise break, y'all. It's a praise break. My son is going to bring my people back. He's not bringing the church back. He's not bringing the Baptists back. He's bringing the nation of Israel back. We don't uh, You all right? Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people within my anger, and will make them drunk in my fury. Mm -hmm. And I will bring down their strength to the earth. I will mention the loving kindness of Yahweh and the praises of Yahweh according to all that Yahweh have bestowed upon us. So, do you see the, the contrast there? He just was talking about bloody garments destroying the nations. Now the first, now the chapter goes into, I will seek of the mercies, the love he's bestowed upon us. The us can't be the ones who just got killed. Mm -hmm. Who is he bestowing the love on? Israel. The nation of Israel. Come on, y'all. Read on. Uh, which he had bestowed on them according to his mercies. And according to the multitude of his loving kindness, for he said, surely they are my people, mm -hmm. children that will not lie. So he was their savior in all their affliction. He was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them in his love and in his pity. He redeemed them and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. This is the spirit of prophecy. This is all Messiah. This is why we love him. He is the spirit of prophecy, and the prophecies for Israel are way more greater than the prophecies for the nation. He said he carried them since the days of old. He was with us on them slave ships. He was with us in the cotton fields. He's the only reason we're standing today saying we're Hebrews and we're lawful because Messiah is the spirit of prophecy. He's been propping us up the whole time. Any comments or questions about that? All praise to the great I am for the blood of Hamashiach. Uh, we about out of here, y'all. Let's go to Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah 30, verses 3 through 9. Y'all all right? Can I get five more minutes? I'm lying. It's going to be more than five minutes. We're about 15, 20 minutes. Jeremiah 30, 3 through 9. This is why we love Hamashiach. We hope you love him. He is the spirit of prophecy, and the prophecies are for Israel to be restored. Not the church, not your pastor. The prophecies are for the children of Israel to be restored. Through prophecy and academic research, we now understand we are the children of Israel. Not spiritual Israel, we are physical Israel. Shema. Three. Uh, Jeremiah 30, verse 3. 
For lo, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Yasharala and Yahweh, Israel and Judah. So the church wants to say, you're his people, you're God's people, if you say this repentance prayer and then give pastor tithes. But the scripture says, my people, and then it tells you who the people are. It says, my people, Israel. Now, Pastor, why you got a five-year degree that you took a loan for to get that certificate? You can't understand my people, then Israel is putting two together? You don't need a degree to understand this Bible. You need to repent and keep the law. We don't uh, That I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, uh -huh. northern and southern kingdoms, saith Yahweh. Uh -huh. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, uh -huh. and they shall possess it. And these are the words that Yahweh spake concerning Yahshua Allah and concerning Yahweh. Them. The text is making a distinction, Israel and Judah, to let you know these are the 12 tribes reunited. The reason why I pointed that out for the, for the ones who still learning, those people over there now, y'all say that y'all are Jews, but where are the other tribes at? The Most High says, when I restore my people to the land of their fathers, it's going to be Israel, the northern kingdom, and the Jews. Not every Hebrew is a Jew. Not every Israelite is a Jew. A real Jew is from the southern kingdom, the tribe of Judah. Your father was Judah. So if y'all the people, where are your other brothers at? Y'all got all the money in the world, and y'all ain't got no expeditions looking for the, the, the ten tribes? Read on, Ah. For thus saith Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling of fear uh -huh. and not of peace. Mm -hmm. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? It's going to be so bad, us big burly bearded men, it's going to be bent over in pain. Like what is going on? They don't talk about this. Only get out and vote. It's going to get better. La hi, this ain't about to get better. It's about to get worse. That's why we're going to practice the car so we can understand, be humble. All we got is one second of bread left. <laughs> be brief, three, four, one second of bread. Who drunk the last water? Ah, we don't need this right now, brother. <laughs> My stomach is, ah, we don't need this confusion. <laughs> who, who, who got an eight last piece of fish? Ah, let's just go get some more fish. Let's go cash it down. That's why we practice the car. It's not about to get better. It's going to get worse. Read on. Uh, and all faces turn into paleness. Mm -hmm. Alas, that day is great. Now, how can you tell? Let's keep going. So that none is like it. Mm -hmm. Even the time of Jacob's trouble. It's, it the, peak. The, time of it's the peak trouble. of Jacob's trouble. It's the height of Jacob's trouble. Who are Jacob? We are. We are. The children of Israel. Israel. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, not the church trouble. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, the Israelites' trouble. Read on. But he shall be saved out of it. The church is going to be saved. Jacob shall be saved out of it. The Baptist? Israel shall be saved out of it. Well, surely the Holy Ghost filled fire baptized. I'm running for my life. Amen. Jacob Jacob's shall be, be saved, saved out of it. Come on now. For it shall come to pass in the day, saith Yahweh Tazabah, that I will break his yoke from off your neck and will burst your bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him, but they shall serve Yahweh their Allahim and David their Malach, whom I will raise up unto them. This is the same language of Isaiah 14. Abba is reversing this. Right now, as you sitting here with us having a good time, you're being charged for your air. How many left your air on, right? It's hot, right? You, you got to pay for that air. That air ain't free. How many you left your lights on? They charge you for this. Your internet's still going? They charge you for this. You're serving your oppressors right here as you relax. You're still serving these people. Y'all got paid yesterday? How much did that girl FICA take from you? <laughs> What's the other one? What's the other one over there? You got FICA. Oh. Uh, uh, social, uh, SSI, who are these people in my chat? <laughs> I didn't see them when I clocked in. <laughs> Man. We're serving our oppressors. I was going to reverse this thing. Any comments or questions about this? Uh, a quick, just a quick comment. Um, like you were saying about not getting any better and things like that. 
um, it was it's like a little controversy going on with in the sports world, and I happened to be on one of those uh, spaces last night where all the black people came together because this person spoke out against the blacks, and it turned into like a political thing. To cut all that out and make it a short story, it just made me see being you know in the walk and the the wisdom so far that the Most High has given, you know they're all trying to figure out ways to make it better for you know black people and dealing with it from a political sense and they were asking people like it was Tariq Nasheed's um, space and then he would let people come in and talk and so I'm just listening and people he was like well what's your idea brother and he'll say like well who sh who are we supposed to vote for and just to just to cut the details the people people were so confused like they know and there's about 1700 black people in there and they they know something got to change but they don't know what to do because he was like they who who should we vote for they don't want to say vote for trump so they feel like they're gonna get attacked so then they will say well we can't vote for the democrats and i'm like y'all ain't catching it yet like this neither one is not going to work for us but it just showed me like our people the ones that's still in darkness they looking for something they because they, they still israelites right. they looking for the salvation but they just don't know they're not being pointed to where to find it or the spirit has not led them to that look this system ain't gonna be for us so they still cleaving to like Egypt's ways and the political system. So it just made me see that just listening to them in that group last night. It's truly a blessing when the brother says in his song, Baruch are your eyes to see. Blessed are your eyes to see that this country, not one vote was cast to put us on slave ships. Not one vote was cast to take, this, to take the shackles off. They, they didn't have a vote to, to take us out of, the father says my people had enough. It was in the prophecies. He says I'm going to cause the nation to pity y'all. So y'all didn't have a vote to get us out the cotton field. My father said it's enough. And he caused the action to happen, slaves go free. Y'all didn't vote for that. Father caused So if you understand that our condition is, is not based on politics, it's based on lawlessness. That's what got us here. Now, to bring some levity, any Richard Pryor friends in here? I know y'all holy now, y'all watching now. Vote for none of the above. <laughs> Y'all see Bruce's millions? That's what I'm telling you. Vote for none of the above. Right. Neither one of them is going to help you. Yeah. You didn't put me here. So, all praise to great I am. Any other comments and questions before we wrap this up? Christ is the spirit of prophecy. The prophecies for Israel are positive and they're superior to the other nations. I'm not here to debate you. I'm not here to argue. We're reading this text. We're reading this text. Let's go to Matthew 24, 31. Matthias is Matthew. Matthias is Matthew. Gift of Yah. Matthew 24, verse 31. We're putting Messiah in his proper perspective. We love him. We pray in his name. We ask everything because of his name, by his blood. We don't worship him because he don't worship himself. He worships the Father. Isn't that weird? He don't even worship himself. He worships the Father. But you worship the Son. Isn't that weird? It's like your, your granddad and your dad is in the house and you go get your dad a drink. Like, no, I'm gonna get granddad a drink first, then I'm gonna come back and get daddy's drink. That's respect, that's the natural order of things. Matthew 24, 31. Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. And he shall send his Malachian with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from the end of heaven to the other. This is a prophecy for Israelites. The Christian church wants to spiritualize everything, and the elect is those born-again believers. There's no text that says born-again believers are going to be gathered. All the prophecies are about the Israelites being gathered. So Messiah is going to send his, his angels, his messengers, to gather the elect of the Hebrews, the Israelites, lawful Israelites, he's going to gather us from one end of this earth to the other. The texts say heaven, but we know we're not in physical heaven. We're on this earth. From one end of the earth to the other, he's going to send his angels to gather us. Any comments or questions about that? 
The next one is Luke 1, 32 through 33. Luke 1, 32 through 33. Shema. Shema. Read. Luke chapter 1, 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. Uh -huh. And Yahweh Elohim shall give unto him the throne of his father Dua. Mm -hmm. And he shall reign over the house of Yaquab forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. He's going to reign over the house of Jacob. Jacob is a euphemism, a Hebrewism for Israelites. Reigning over the house of Jacob is not the church. Reigning over the house of Jacob is not born again believers, as the Christians say. Reigning over the house of Jacob is physical born again Israelites who have repented for our sins and we've returned to the covenant. Messiah is going to be our king. He's not king of the world. He's not king of the church. He's the king of the Hebrew Israelites. Any comments or questions about that? The next one is Acts 5 and 30. Acts 5 and 30, 30 through 31, Acts. Acts 5, 30 through 31. Shema. Shema. Read. Acts chapter 5 and verse 30. The Allahim of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. So the God of our fathers, the power of our fathers, raised up Christ. If Christ is God, how did, how did the Most High raise him up? He said the God of our fathers raised him up. That's just a two for one. Christ is not God. Uh, I just had a question. Uh, it just came to me. Did Yahweh Shah say all power in heaven and in earth has been given unto me before or after he died? After. That was the resurrection. Okay. Yeah, before he, that's Matthew 28, I believe. All power was given to me. That was after he was resurrected. Okay. The reason I ask, just to go along with what you're saying, if he is the most high, why didn't he have all power before he died? Just critical thinking question, huh? Why didn't he have the all power before he died? The most high gave him more rewards. The most high gave him more glory after he took that torture from us. The most high gave him even more glory. Great question. We're trying to return critical thinking back to this text. In church, you ain't allowed to ask questions. I got my seven bullet point sermon here. We're going to go, go through these scriptures. I'm going to start screaming at you. I'm going to start waving my towel. We're going to get this organ going. We're going to sweat our weaves out. We had a good time. We had a good time. No understanding being taught in these churches. Acts 5 and 30, 31. Him have Yahweh exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. The Most High has raised up Christ to be a prince and a savior. If you're a prince, what does that mean? There's a king. Yeah. There's a king over you. If Messiah is God, why is the text calling him prince? Because his father has never died. His father, the Most High, we call him Yahweh. He's the true king. His son is the prince. The writer of Acts lived and seen him. He's saying the father raised him up to be a prince and a savior for who? To give repentance to Israel. To give repentance to who? Israel. This is why we love Yahweh Shai. This is why I boldly say I'm in love with this man. I'm in love with this man. He took that torture to give repentance for us. Repent means to turn back. If you never had the law, what are you returning back to? Weird. This thing is for blood-born Israelites. Are we saying strangers can't plead to us? No. That's what we open up with. Righteous strangers can plead to us. Now, if you happen to be, you know for sure, you've got your pedigree going back down to all your generations, and you know you come from one of the nations that hurt us, I'm going to let you rock out with us until Messiah comes back, because it's not my job to, 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 to bring judgment to you. Messiah is bringing judgment to you. So if you, if you tell me, I know Esau is my granddaddy, but I want to live right, what y'all teaching us, come on. And Messiah do with you when you get here. Now, if Messiah tag me in to handle you, listen, this what going to hey, listen. <laughs> this is what's going to be. I mean, I know you treated my wife kind, but it's, it's that time. <laughs> this is the hard decision we got to make. No one's talking about. Oh, yeah. No one's talking about this. 
We love Messiah. He is the spirit of prophecy. The prophecy is about restoring Israelites, blood-born Israelites. Through academic research and prophecy, we now understand and can prove we are the Israelites. The next one we're going to is Revelation. Kaza 1 is Revelation. Kaza 1, chapter 3, verse 9. thought this would be a nice little quick review Bible study and let people know because people lie quick y'all know people lie real quick right they don't even talk about Messiah no more like no we you, you ain't listening good enough we love him we pray through his name we just worship his father because he worshiped his father Revelation 3 and 9 Shema read behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. They're lying. They're not really Jews. Uh huh. Behold, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. The Most High is going to. Or must, this is Messiah speaking now. This is the Son speaking. The Son is speaking, saying, "Those who lie and saying they're holy, saying they're Jews, and this could be twofold. This is blood-born Israelites who are lying." You are a Jew by blood, but by spirit, you're a devil. Did y'all catch that? You could be a Jew by blood, but a devil, a, a, by spirit, a devil. So even those pious Jews who killed him, he's going to make them come back to our feet so you know that I love these Nazarites. And definitely the imposters, all y'all saying, I've been anointed by God. Send me $100 for my G4 check. All these apostles, y'all want to come bow down and understand that I love these people. I love these people. Any comments or questions about that? The last one is Revelations 19. Kazawa 19. And I, we got to read this for first 1 through 17. It's so sweet. Revelations 19, 1 through 17. Shema. Shema. Read. Revelations 19, verse 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in the Shemayim saying, Halawiyah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto Yahweh Allahim. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore. Everything the Father is doing on the nation is righteous judgment. When he destroys kingdoms, when he kills people, is righteous judgment. Read on. Which did corrupt the earth with her fornication. And have avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. How much wickedness we learn from other nations? How many grew up that generation where no, you ain't spend the night at nobody's house? Because we done spent the night at these nations' houses, and look how much wickedness we learned. Go to school and university, stand in dorms rooms with strangers, and learn a bunch of wickedness. No, you you got to do it like this. These nations taught us this mess. These nations taught us how to be great sinners. Read on. And again they said, Halawiyah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the forty and the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped Yahweh that sat on the throne. They worship Jesus. They worship God, Alahim. Worship Christ. That worship Yahweh that sat on the throne. They worship the most high God. We call him Yahweh. Read on. Saying, Aman Halawiyah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our Allahim, all ye servants, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. Small and great, poor and rich. Praise the Most High Yah. Praise Yahweh. Read on. And I heard it as it were the voice of a great multitude, mm -hmm. and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Halawiyah, for Alahayim, Yahweh Alahayim, omnipotent reigneth. The Most High is all powerful, he reigneth. The Most High is all powerful, he reigns. This goes back to Nariah's question. The text is saying that Yahweh, the Most High, is omnipotent, meaning all powerful. Messiah says, All power was given to me after he resurrected. So if Messiah says, All power was given to me, and it only happened after the resurrection, he can't be the most high God because this text say that Yahweh, God, is all um, omnipotent, 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 whatever you want, how you, you devilish language. 
The most high God himself is all powerful and he reigns. He reigns. Read on. Verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. Mm -hmm. And his wife hath made herself ready. Uh -huh. And to her was granted that she should be arraigned in fine linen, clean and white. Mm -hmm. And for the fine linen the, is the righteousness of the saints. Okay. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And saith unto me, These are the true sayings of Allah. Uh -huh. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and thou brethren and thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, worship Yahweh. For the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. We're brothers to the angels, and we have the witness, we have the receipts, the Messiah is the only true begotten Son of the Most High. We have the testimony, Yahweh Shai did come in the flesh. He did break his body for us, and he was risen with all power. We have the receipts to prove it, and it's inside our souls, inside our spirits. Read on. And I saw the Shemayim opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. Mm -hmm. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew. But he himself. This is getting good, uh huh. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Where did we read that before? Isaiah. Isaiah 60, was it? 63? 63. 63? His garments was, as he was dyed, he treaded out the wine press. Now, the, the end of our scroll says he has many crowns, a name nobody knows, and we see his, his cloak, his garment is dipped in blood. All y'all talk about, I know it was the blood. I, this blood ain't for you. This blood is your blood. Because you've been lawless. Because you, you've been saying grace is all you need. The law has served its purpose, and Jesus nailed the law to the cross. Pastor got five kids by two different women. This is lawless people started with Israelites. Starting with the house of Israel, you're going to be killed by the Messiah. We call him Yahweh Shah. Read that again, Al. Mm -hmm. His eyes were as flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he himself, or and he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. Mm -hmm. And he was clothed in with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of Yahweh. What is the Word of Yahweh? The Spirit of Prophecy. Mm -hmm. You see how this correlates? You see how we produce witnesses, what we say? We don't get up here just giving you sound bites. Yahweh Shai, Revelation 19 and 10 says that Messiah is the spirit of prophecy. Now, to verse, what, how many verses down? He says it again. He has a name. His name is the word of God. His name is the word of Yahweh. He is the spirit of prophecy. This is why we love him. Read on, Ab. And the armies which were in the Shemayim followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Uh -huh. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it shall smite the nations. Uh -huh. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty Yahweh. You see how the, the armies, their, their linen was white. It didn't say their linen was stained with blood. You see how that marries Isaiah 63? I've treaded the winepress alone. No one's with me. He's getting busy by himself. Oh, man, I wish I had an A-flat. One will chase a thousand. Two will chase ten thousand. Well, this one is the great I am son. How do you think he's going to get rid of? One of us. Come on, man. One of us physical Israelites being lawful will take out a thousand. Two of us will take out ten thousand. This is the son who knew no sin. How do you think he can get rid of? I have no fear. I have no fear. There's no fear here. Read on, I'm going to get out your back. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Mm -hmm. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, 
So all the fowls that flyeth in the midst of heaven. All the birds, all the vultures, the crows, all you dirty birds of, of, of prey, we got a, we got a feast for you. Mm. We, we, we got a, a smorgasbord for you. Y'all see them big, those big crows and stuff being in your yard? Buzzards. <laughs> those buzzards eating the deer wow. on the side of the road? That's what the angels are saying. All you big nasty wow. birds, I know y'all hungry, we got something for you. Hey, go to the president of, of America. Hey, go to, hey, go to Pope. Hey, go Putin. Get his eyes. Get his nose. We're sitting back. We don't have nothing to worry about when we're lawful. That's why we take this seriously. Everyone can't come in and stay, and I'm fine with it. I know you're, I'm Gucci. Everyone can't come in and stay because this thing is serious. One person can get you killed being lawless, playing with this thing. So everyone can't come in and stay, and I'm fine with it. I'm cool like the other side of the pillow. When it's all said and done, who needs to be here is going to be here, and we're going to do wonderfully. We don't lie. And um, all the all the fowls that, that flyeth in the midst of heaven, come gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great Allah uh -huh. that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, small and great. And I saw a beast, and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. This is all we need. This is the why. This is why we love him. Yahweh Shai, we call him Yahweh Shai. He's the only begotten son. He is the spirit of prophecy. He is the word of the Most High. And we love him. We don't worship him anymore, but we love him. We worship his father because he worshiped his father. And we have nothing to fear. No, we're not getting out casting no vote. I don't have to send in my ballot. All, I'm, we're sending up prayers now. We're not casting ballots. We're casting prayers to our Abba. Any comments or questions? All praise to the great I am. Um, we know what side our, our bread is buttered on. We say, Kali Dala, Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai. He is the only begotten son. He is our soon coming king. The water will buy for your patience. The water will buy for those. The reading. Uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, we'll stand the face up. Anybody online had any questions or comments before we close out?